Jimmy Garoppolo, who was 13 to 21, 454 yards at a touchdown, completed his first five passes. And he looked like Jimmy Garoppolo. He looked like Jimmy Garoppolo. Did the team look better? They were moving the ball with Trey Lance yesterday. So I don't know if they look better with Jimmy Garoppolo under center. They look like a team quarterback by Jimmy Garoppolo. It did a lot feel of run like plays. they threw it a little more. They threw, early on, they threw yeah. it a little more, and he yeah. tried to throw deep, but those balls were sailing. How about, and, how about Shanahan know. running an RPO for Jimmy Garoppolo down near the goal line after well, already injuring well, his other quarterback? It's pure arrogance. Again, I mean, what was that? Shanahan admitted this training camp that last year there was a quarterback competition for a stint. There was. But last year, when everybody kept asking about the quarterback, he called everybody hard-headed. <laughs> Remember that? I called do. everybody hard-headed and set me off. It's like, wait, hello? we just want to know who's the quarterback. We'll stop asking you questions when you name the starting quarterback. And for some reason, he didn't want to name the starting quarterback. And so he called us hard-headed for asking the question over and over and over again. And the air gets that was exuding in that post-game pressure yesterday. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I can't get down with that. Spadoni, can you play the sound well, of when he was asked about Trey Lance running the ball on second and that? I know you got something, Shaska. Yeah, I'll let you go I, after I, this. I got to get the Shanahan sound yeah, up there. People need to hear this. Spadoni, play the sound where he was asked about running Trey Lance on second and eight. We'll get that in just a second. All, All right, right, go so ahead. I'll do my thing real quick. I've been watching this team my whole life. My whole life. I've been talking about the 49ers and the quarterbacks for the 49ers with my grandfather and my dad. My grandpa goes back to 1946, Keysar. He has seen every quarterback. Frankie Albert, you know, John Brody, Y.A. Tittle, everyone in between. Your Montanas, your young, so did my dad. My dad's had season tickets to Candlesticks in 78. All right? We've seen it all. I've been blessed to go to so many games. This is probably my first love in terms of teams. As much as I love the Giants and the Warriors, this was the team, the gold standard team. B, my entire adult life, I feel like they have botched the quarterback situation. And what I'm saying is like, I thought they learned from the, I'm talking about the organization as a whole. I thought they learned from the Alex Smith thing. They draft a kid. He's so raw. He's like physically immature enough. Like his body wasn't big enough to even play the position. They had no weapons. They had no offensive line. Boom, he hurts his shoulder. They rush him back in there. It ends up doing the coaching and Mike Nolan. And it ends up really sabotaging Alex Smith's career for multiple years. Okay? The guy physically had his arm wrecked. Yep. And it's an accident. Accidents happen, but it's, it's how you you support these guys and put together the nurturing infrastructure so that this person could be the best version of themselves. Then he finally does have some success and they bring in Colin Kaepernick and we all agree like, okay, Cap took him to another level. But for Cap to fully reach his maturation process, I hoped, I prayed, I wished that they could develop him as a passer. And it felt like for a variety of reasons, some internal, some external, he never got there as a passer and he left so much to be desired. We could argue till we're blue in the face about what happened more. Was it the team? Was it the player that didn't study enough? It was. I think it was a combination of all those things. But he never learned to throw from the pocket at a high enough clip to be the quarterback we dreamed him to mm -hmm. be. Jimmy Garoppolo comes after being dormant for years, and I'm like, God, they got to get him an O line. They got to empower get him more this weapons guy. on the outside. Get him weapons on the outside. Keep him healthy. And it's like, boom, they're working, they're working. And it felt like to me the 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 big disconnect. Clearly, he got hurt, but the coach never fully trusted him. He didn't fully he empower didn't, him, which is why he hung out there in the off season without a football team. I the feel, guy was storing on another field for crying out loud without a playbook. All right, and then you moved off of Jimmy Garoppolo, or at least traded to go get Trey Lance because you wanted to see, A, a higher ceiling, and also a big part was because Jimmy couldn't stay healthy. It was both of those things, not stay, either or. Couldn't stay healthy, couldn't take the top off And the you defense. wanted him to, to, to develop. I feel like I can write a book on how to ruin a quarterback based on the 49ers history from the last 20 years. You know what? I really do. Maybe, it, maybe. Dry, I'm, I'm like ready well, to throw up. Listen, listen. I'm good for Craig the Maybe Craig Carton was right. Maybe Craig Carton was right. Maybe this is the most dysfun dysfunctional organization when it comes to NFL quarterbacks. Because literally last Wednesday, last Wednesday, came on these areas where he said, he's going to get hurt with this type of game plan. I mean, we, we saw it coming it a mile away. didn't even last the first quarter. <laughs> I turned to my cousin three plays in. I said, he's getting hit too much. I literally tweeted it out seconds before it happened. said it last Wednesday. And you could see it coming. said it last Wednesday. I thought you drafted him because he's a great... He could be a great pocket quarterback because on third down, he could step up and hit a throw. 
unlike any of these quarterbacks we've had in the last 20 years. But no, 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 no. Let's run him. Let's run him in the A-gaps. Let's treat him like a fullback. And if he's not ready to throw the ball, then why is he starting? Well, that's the other thing that and I've why seen. Is he, why is he playing quarterback if he can't throw the ball? Because they moved what? heaven and earth to go get him. So, Why'd you draft him? Well, then Why'd you draft him? These are this the fair questions. Scouting. These are the fair if questions. He, if you don't trust this guy to throw the ball, then why'd you draft him number three overall? It makes no sense. Let's go to the consultant listening on the Odyssey app out there in Walnut Creek. What's up, consultant? Oh, man. I want to say it's a, it's a great day because we've got a win. I can tell you what, though, this does not feel like a, a Monday win day. Agreed. I'm with you guys, man. I was at the game yesterday, and before he got hurt, it, I turned to my wife and I was like, this guy's going to get injured. It, I mean, <laughs> everybody stop running. Everyone everyone saw it. Saw it. Saw it. Saw it. Anna, my girl, Anna, knows nothing about football. And she was saying it in Chicago last week. was like, man, he's running a lot for a quarterback. She literally said that last week, let alone this week. Yeah, totally. And, and I was looking it up yesterday. You know, they keep on talking about Josh Allen. Even Josh Allen, last year, he had a, a pass-to-throw rating or mm-hmm. ratio. Mm-hmm. Something like 3.5 to 1. Yeah. You're running Trey Lance at 1.8 to 1. <laughs> and at the end of the day, you know what, guys? It's like there's the human element exactly. and then there's the team. If I start with the team, we, we might just be fine. I mean... We, Jimmy Garoppolo's taking us to a Super Bowl. He's taken us to an NFC Championship game. And there might be a good enough team around. And that defense came through yesterday, zero points allowed. We might get to the Super Bowl again. I don't know. Yeah. But the human element here, man. You're breaking up You're a breaking little bit. It's a great point. And I want to finish this point because the human element is so true. Think about this. Just think about this team. At every time, Kyle has had somebody who's on his you know what list. Think about it. Think about it from the beginning until now. There's always something. Ah, I don't trust you. I don't trust you. I don't trust you. It's always someone. And I know people like this in my life where they have to have an enemy at all times or they have to have somebody that they're beefing with at all times. Don't you know people like that? Yep. Like, the, does Andy Reid beef with players no. and alienate guys? No. Hey, you know, I'm asking it's so that. Crazy. So, does McVeigh? Like, last year, remember at the beginning of the year? It wasn't even Trey and Jimmy. It was Ayuk. Oh, it was Ayuk. Ayuk. He's in the doghouse. Ayuk. And now, look, when you have one, I can say, hey, you know, that's an isolated guy. But Dante every Pettis. year, it's somebody. Dante Pettis. Oh, the guy who beat you? <laughs> 415 Comcast Business Text. And all you guys are doing is creating more negative vibes around the team. That's what you guys did this entire Trey and Jimmy era. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. Keep hating. Go Niners. Nobody's hating on the 49ers. I spent my hard-earned money to go to Dallas in that NFC Championship last year yeah, you and watch my team. 49ers. Yeah, I have season watch tickets. Them. You have season I, I, tickets. I love this and, team. And I'm paying full price for everything. <laughs> love I brought this team. five people to the game yesterday <laughs> right. and spent a boatload of money. You know right. why? Because I love this team. Diego and Zuri. I bought beers to the entire row. Entire row, 6 and 227. We, had, we all had beers. We all had a good time. But we all felt sick for Trey. All felt sick about it. And we're not creating anything. Now it's Jimmy's team. Moving forward, it's Jimmy's team. And now, since everybody wanted Jimmy Garoppolo, a lot of people all of a sudden became Jimmy Garoppolo fans, which came out of nowhere, right? Jimmy re-signs, and all of a sudden, oh, yeah, we got number 10 back. Didn't hear that. Sa- was it the same energy all offseason? Okay, we're going to rally behind number 10. Of course you we're going to rally behind I want the them. Niners to kick the Broncos' ass next Sunday night football. And, and I want them to go to the Super Russ. Bowl because we all want a Lombardi. Exactly. We all want a Lombardi. You want the Nick Foles situation in reverse or however you want to break it down. But you cannot tell me. From day one of the Shanahan Lynch era, they had botched the quarterback situation. They drafted C.J. Bathroom in the third round, and midway through the year, they said, oh, snap, we're screwed. <laughs> we don't have a quarterback. Let's trade for Jimmy. And, and I defended them, and, and looking Belichick, back, I, I feel like I can't Bill anymore. Bill Belichick gifted them Jimmy Garoppolo. What if Belichick was like, I'm going to keep Garoppolo? Who the hell knows who would have been the quarterback of well, the 49ers? That's the cool part. So you admit that you don't scout Mahomes and Watson. Probably something I wouldn't admit. Something I wouldn't admit. I would keep that close to the vest. I'm sorry. I'm not admitting that. Especially when you draft C.J. Beathard in the third round and you're waiting on Kirk Cousins. So Kirk Cousins, it's not an option anymore. So now you got Jimmy. You give him $137.5 million. But you don't wrap your arms around Jimmy. And then all these stories about Jimmy goes to the team and all that stuff. All these smoke screens about Jimmy Garoppolo. Why nobody nip that in the bud? Nobody. Shed a didn't seem to nip it in the bud. Did you tell Jimmy, oh, we're going to flirt with Tom Brady? And then, you know what? We don't want Tom Brady. The the worst part (laughs) of the Tom Brady story was they assessed he was finished. Yeah. That's the worst part. So now you're assessing that Brady's finished. He's obviously not finished. Now i got to question the assessment of Trey Lance. 
I got to cross the assess with the Trey Lance. I, I, I think Trey Lance could be really good. Now, after what, seeing him with a broken ankle, I don't care if he's 22, 23 years old. The fact is, he's not going to play football for three years. Is it fair for me to ask you, like, hey, the guy that the Niners were going to hire before he ended up going to the Rams, Sean McVay, would he have utilized Trey Lance, given what we saw in college, the way the kid was under center, would he have used him this way? I'm asking you. I don't think so. McVay would have protected his guy. He would have protected his guy. Let's go back out to the lines. Mondo, what's happening? You're on the roast. Hey, what's up, fellas? You know, I'm like... Everyone else, I'm frustrated, but this is coaching you know, our practice on Shanahan, man. Since day one, I remember last year I called you guys after the Texas game. This is not the guy. This is not a quarterback whisperer, man. Even his dad won with John Elway. Every, after that, he didn't win anything else. This guy does not develop quarterbacks well. How do you see Brian Dable now with the Giants, 2-0? and How do you see Doug Peterson? You see what he's doing with Mitch Lawrence? He's looking good out there. And we got Shanahan here? I mean, come on, man. Running quarterback power like he's over here with Mike Allstott? What are we doing, Shanahan? I mean, and all the media out here doesn't even put him in the hot seat. He should be in the hot seat, you know? And moving forward, this team better win the Super Bowl now that GBG supposedly going to be our quarterback. Because if not, if it was Trey, I would have taken a playoff uh, appearance, win one or lose one, being good. But now we need to win the Super Bowl. So Shanahan is on the hot seat. And young Trey, hope you get blessed, you get better. And as soon as you get out of San Francisco, if Shad has still here, get out of San Francisco, man, because this guy's going to run you like RG3, going to run you to the ground. And this guy's not a quarterback whisperer. That's all I got. You know, that was- all right, all right, Mondo. Good call there. We got to go to the hotline. Let's get him in. Papa Shasky's on the line. Uh, Papa Shasky, what's happening? You're on the roast. Uh, good morning, fellas. Our hearts are heavy this morning, and uh, and it's just a shame. You know, I, I only set this up for you. So I'm down in San Diego over the weekend for the first time, and uh, – and I'm I, I, half an hour before the game. I'm scouting around looking for a sports bar so I can see the game. I've gone to I go to two or three different places, and they're not going to be able to show the game for me. I end up limping back to the hotel. I'm sitting in the lobby watching the stupid I don't know what game was on, and I'm on my phone. And the game starts, and I'm on my phone with the little Comcast, and I'm seeing the little field where the where the arrow goes back and forth, and I see that there's a play where um, where there was a pass interference and the four niners go down the field. The next thing I see, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Trey Lance injured. I just literally screamed in my hands, are you kidding me? No, no, no. And I'm going, this is what we didn't want. Just... And I'm just, I'm so frustrated. And I'm running around trying to fight because I couldn't see the play. And then the kid from the outside comes in. He says, I think uh, Trey broke his ankle. And I go, are you kidding me? Oh, my God. And I, and I couldn't see the play. And it was so frustrating. And then I'm going on Twitter, and it doesn't come up fast enough. And I couldn't find out. I'm, I'm trying to find out what's going on. It just killed me to find out what happened. But, what, then when I saw the one picture where the ankle was sideways, it reminded me of when I broke my leg. So it's just so devastating. And I felt for both of you guys out there uh, at the game. And I texted Joe. Joe couldn't. Joe didn't see my thing. I was just so frustrated for the Four Niners fans. We really wanted to see what this kid could do. My only take is that, you know, with the RPO, does he think he maybe took on a little too much of his own, that he was trying to do too much because of what happened last week, and he took a lot of blame for what happened last week, which means he really stepped as a mature young kid to take that blame, and he tried to do too much this week? I don't know. You guys tell it's, me. It's interesting. Well, I mean, look, you've seen him play now in a couple of games. Wouldn't you agree? Like, he's getting hit way too many times. There's no way he was going to last the whole year. I, I you know, and, and, and I don't want to say that, you know, that the Seattle was gunning for him, you know, but, you know, you don't run that guy up the middle. I know the middle was the open spot because it was open, but you don't really run him that many times. We've said this over yeah. and over and over. Every talk show has been saying, don't run him. I, I just don't get it. I, he's not, he's not ready to be running. He's not that big a guy to be running up the middle. He's not that he's quick. Not the, two he's not that fast. For. He's not Lamar Jackson. He's hey, not no. Josh Allen. Pops, when, and, and, when, when Montana and went down. Running, we're running the ball decent. When Montana went down or Steve Young went down, didn't we always criticize the, the head coach for not protecting the quarterback? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah it's, you know, football is a freak thing. People get injured like that. It just was, how did we just know that it was going to happen? Because they're <laughs> running them into a brick wall. Written into the cards that 
this guy's going to come out. He's going to get injured. I mean, we all we all worried about it, and then it came to fruition. It's just so frustrating. Thanks, pops. It is frustrating. It is frustrating. But you know what? Niners got to win. They're one and one, yeah, and they beat the Seahawks. It's I get it. It's an afterthought right now. I don't know how. I don't know how to eat that pill, but we have to eat that pill. I know. Yeah, no, no doubt. No doubt. I'm. Thanks, pops. Thanks, I love pops. you, buddy. I, look. Uh, and we're always going to be Niner fans true and through. Exactly. No doubt. So we just gotta, no doubt. Know, everybody's going to have no. to play for the guy next to him now. A, a lot of people got revisionist history. Nobody ever on this show rooted against Jimmy Garoppolo. We didn't root for him to lose. No, I, but the head coach told you, I don't trust the quarterback, so I'm going to go get another quarterback. And we wanted to see that new quarterback in Trey Lance. We wanted to see that new shiny toy, and we saw glimpses. We got little teases of it, right? Little appetizers. And I was like, man, this guy could be really good. But, man, the way they ran him this year, the way they ran him in Arizona, again, in Arizona last year, Trey Lance, 16 carries, 89 yards. Gets the Texans, 8 carries, 31. Last week against Chicago, 13 carries, 54 yards. Third and six first possession, you run up on a quarterback draw. You get the first down, but it's unnecessary punishment. He got hit four straight plays on that drive. Would they have ran him as much as they did early on if Jimmy wasn't on the roster? I don't know that answer. Because now we're playing this game. That. I've seen a lot of people, thank God they were smart enough to keep Jimmy no, in. No, 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 no. They were not smart enough to keep Jimmy. They looked into Jimmy Garoppolo. That's one thing I will not do this morning. And I hope we get John Lynch on the show. I hope we get Shanahan on the show one day. They looked into Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy's a nice guy. Jimmy's been the most disrespected 49er I can ever recall. I can remember. I, he's disrespected. He's, won, he's helped them win a lot of big games. He's been part of some big games. He helped change this franchise around. The franchise has changed the minute he came to Santa Clara. But let's not let's not give the Niners credit for bringing back restructuring Jimmy Garoppolo. They lucked into Jimmy Garoppolo. They couldn't find a trade partner. They held him out for they, for some reason. They want a first round pick for Jimmy. You're not going to get that. You're not going to get second round picks. You know, because if they would have got offered two second round picks like they said they did, they would have traded him. They would have traded him for two seconds. But they didn't. They lucked into Jimmy Garoppolo. So they don't get any credit for having Jimmy Garoppolo back on the team as an insurance policy. They lucked into that do, move. Do you think that they would have run Trey Lance the same amount if it was Sudfeld and Purdy instead of Purdy and Garoppolo don't know. behind him? Don't know. Don't know. What do you think? What do you feel? I, I don't know, Shaq. You can't even, you I can't can't even yeah. answer. I don't know. I don't know because... I'm not sure either. I